hello viewers welcome to this video in this video we will be looking at the november 2020 science paper 2 question c1 question c1 reads one major use of iron in everyday life is making alloys one major use of iron in everyday life is in making of alloys so c1a Describe the structure of an alloy. Describe the structure of an alloy. Draw a labeled diagram to illustrate your answer. So draw a labeled diagram to illustrate your answer. So first things first, we need to understand what an alloy is. So A. What is an alloy? An alloy is a mixture of a metal and another element. So an alloy is a mixture of a metal and another element. The element can either be another metal or a non-metal. Okay? So first and foremost, an alloy is a mixture of a metal and another element all right so having done that so we now need to describe using a labeled diagram so we now need to draw okay to show this so uh the alloy i'm going to pick is steel the ordinary steel now steel is made up of iron and carbon okay steel is a combination of iron and carbon all right now what is there is that in our iron we will only add a small amount of carbon in our in our uh, iron we will only add a small amount of uh, carbon now in doing this what it is going to look like will be like this so we are going to have our carbon there our ion sorry our ion like that okay and we are going to have a carbon there and probably another carbon there okay then we will continue with our iron okay so we will have our iron like that all right so So we will have iron like that. So this is basically how uh, an alloy looks like. So in this, we actually have this, okay? And we have, uh, we will have also that. So, this is iron, okay, and this is carbon. All right, so we have our iron and our carbon. So, that is how an alloy 
looks like so the mixture is there now uh, there are other things that may come okay there are other things that may come there are other questions that may be asked on alloys for example uh, when we look at uh, when we look at the properties uh, of these alloys okay and how they compare to uh, a metal which is which which they've not added anything uh, they will talk about strength okay how does the strength of the metal change now um, if we had a pure metal okay if we had a pure metal we would have uh, something like this uh, we would have these are the metal ion which are mostly arranged in a regular pattern okay they are arranged in a regular pattern all right so and this pattern is called a lattice so they are arranged in a regular lattice and the reason why uh, a pure metal is weaker than an alloy is that you can see that these are in almost straight lines so if a force mm, so if a force if a force was to act in that direction if a force was to act in that direction the the upper layer would just slide it would just slide okay okay leaving the lower layers uh in their original position so this uh entail this tells us that okay there is higher chances of def deformation of the metal with just a small force f that acts on the metal now if if we look at the alloy okay if we look at the alloy if a force acted there if a force acted there what happens is that as the force goes it reaches a point where it finds this uh, carbon atom which is bigger than uh, the ion itself and this interlocks with the lower layer so you find that when a force F acts on the upper layer it is blocked from sliding by the foreign uh, element which interlocks it with it, the layer beneath it okay making it stronger and more resistant to shear okay that is the reason why uh, alloys are usually stronger however this question has got nothing to do with why alloys are stronger but it is just a point that we should not that we should always have that in mind that when it comes to alloy such kind of questions may come where they can even ask us to illustrate some of these properties all right uh, let's we can get rid of uh, we can get rid of the pure metal we can get rid of this all right uh, it has refused to go so we continue we'll just continue all right we'll just continue it still wants to stay all right so we go to b so we go to b b is saying that uh, give two reasons why iron is alloyed give two reasons why iron is alloyed here there are two major reasons why uh, metals are alloyed and the first one is that uh, to increase to increase the strength The strength of the metal to increase the strength of the metal two okay so to increase the strength of the metal so to increase the strength of iron secondly 
to increase okay to increase to increase the resistance to increase the resistance to corrosion to increase the resistance to corrosion okay uh, corrosion is basically when i say corrosion i'm talking about rusting so uh i'll give an example stainless steel uh does not rust stainless steel does not rust okay so it has got a higher corrosion resistance okay yeah uh and secondly, stainless steel is stronger than uh, pure iron. All right. Uh -huh. So we can now go to uh, C1C. Okay. C1C. C1C1. Okay. C1C1. Name two alloys of iron. Name two alloys of iron. One is the ordinary steel. Okay. The ordinary steel okay now in this steel we've got mild steel or oh, yeah so we can even say mild steel let's say mild steel mild steel mild steel and stainless steel and stainless steel and stainless steel okay so we've got mild steel and we've got stainless steel all right so mild steel and stainless steel then we proceed to uh, c2 so c roman numeral 2 c2 uh, state one use of each alloy stated in c1 so we've got mild steel mild steel first okay so mild steel what is mild steel used mild steel is used uh for a lot of things okay uh it is used in construction okay it is used in construction uh in construction where is it used it is used uh in the manufacture of door frames window frames and so on and so forth secondly it is used in the manufacture of car bodies so you can choose from an endless list of such uses so it is used in uh, the manufacture of car bodies okay that's for mild steel uh, uh, second is stainless steel stainless steel okay stainless steel uh, stainless steel also has a wide variety one it is used to uh, in the manufacture of kitchen utensils uh when when i say kitchen utensils i mean things like spoons and knives spoons and knives okay it is used in the manufacture of so stainless steel it is used in the manufacture of kitchen utensils okay this is used in the manufacture of kitchen utensils such as spoons all right uh 
viewers this brings us to uh question d this brings us to question d okay d give one use of iron other than making alloys give one use of iron other than making alloys so uh, other than all these alloys and whatever what is the use of iron uh, what comes out uh, the most in this question is okay other than all the things we've talked about where else can we use iron remember we've done a lot of things in our syllabus in our course in our science course especially the chemistry part remember we also looked at a very important process uh, uh, an industrial process called the Haber process and in the Haber process we actually talked of the using iron as a catalyst and iron itself being a transition element it is it has got catalytic properties so we can take advantage of that and actually state it as a use other than uh, uh, in the use of it as uh, maybe um, general metal uses like the structure taking advantage of the structural strength of iron and so on and so forth so here the simple answer is that it is used as a catalyst it is used as a catalyst it is used as a catalyst in the Haber process. It is used as a catalyst in the Haber process. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.